Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Tia No, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. But right now, we must be securing food. We don't need anything else, Comrade Grechko. For the first time in hours, Marshal Andrei Grechko turned away from the tabletop map. Some butter broad at the chefs, or the chefs are offering thanks, he said to the secretary, keeping his wrinkled smile free of the strain, hammering as eyeballs. With any luck, his endeavors would be worth the migraine built from poor lighting and fine print. Then again, the map itself may have already been outdated by the time the courier delivered it to his office. Stable borders were luxuries in West Russia for a reason after all, and what use was there in making deals with the dead warlord? Gretzko loosened a groan as he inspected his map again. Scattered around its margins were one-page reports of the region's most notable warlords, like the Tsars and Vyatka, or the peculiar Republicans in Siktivkar. Some even discussed warlords beyond the Urals, like their compatriots in the Svedlosk. These statelets could feed most of the chargelets or charge with at least two meals a day, a gosh darn sight better than still than the Red Army's own capabilities in any case. Grand Marshal Voroshilov would delight in knowing anyone the front can trade for, with, with for food, reactionary or not. The front's foreign minister was not only was not one for easy distractions, except apparently for the plateful of bread, butter, and thick slices of Doktorskaya Kolbasa, a secretary turned with. Each bite reminded Grechko of his labor's fruits, and greeting the butcher. The uneducated observer might assume that there is no use for diplomacy between warlord states. They are hard places ruled by hard men who take what they want by force. Shouldn't diplomacy be pointless, a vestigial construct of a civilized era? The warlord thinks very differently about the situation. When the front lines are fluid and the alliances are formed and break with equal speed, active diplomacy is the difference between ruling fat and happy and being filled with more bullet holes and healthy. As such, Andrei Grechko, chief diplomat of the WRF, was constantly busy. He hated this part. His job was never fun, but visiting Borkuta was a hellish journey through which brutish, brutal winters and mosquito-filled summers all to reach Russia's largest gulag. Finally, on a particularly cold night, he and his guard detail waited patiently or impatiently over coffee for the commandant to open up and let them in. After hours of shivering, of sitting shivering, they heard a voice from the other side. Marshal Gretchko, is that you? It was the commandant himself. Good God, Vasily, let us in. Gretchko's ch chattered teeth were nearly audible. The first, the terms first, thank you. I hear that you'd like us to increase coal shipments. We do need something in return, you know. Gretchko racked his brain for something he could promise in exchange for coal, and more importantly, entry. Guns? Refused. Blokin had plenty. Oil? The gulags had all the energy he could ever want. Men? Those always in sharp demand, and the WRRF did have a glut of prisoners. Blokin uh, seemed to agree because he gave the signal for his men to open up almost immediately. Would you let us have let us freeze to deaths? said Gretchko. Blokin declined to answer. Evidently, the most prolific executioner in history wouldn't have balked at a few more deaths. Eyes and negotiation tactics. Followed up with. Shift the blame. We shall never deny the fact that the West Russian War continues to be one of the greatest disappointments the Russian people must bear to endure as a grand defeat. However, we're also duly allowed to recognize the truth in acknowledging how we lost such a war when the Nazis were so close to collapse. The truth being the name of Mikhail Suslov, party inspector and former leader of the purges under the misguided Lazar Kaganovich, applying the conflict as a means of vying for power and a terrible sin of ambitious betrayal. Suslov's manipulation of the party balance caused a great general collapse for us according to the world word of Mikhail Tukhachevsky. Recognizing that this great betrayal will be a great step in handling the matter and bringing the inspector to justice before the West Russian Revolutionary Front. Let's see, what do we have here? Uh, we don't need that open. Work against him would probably be good. I don't want any more factionals, but we're doing pretty well over there. Well, we don't have that much stability either, and that's well, not great, but whatever. Cool, we have some comments to go through, but let's read the next focus anyways, and then we'll talk about it. Steady she goes. Mark Shell Georgi Zukov may have served the Soviet Union well and into prosperity, even managing to lead several regiments to victory against the despicable German invaders during the 1950s invasions throughout the West Russian War. However, it ought to be acknowledged that the man dones a broken spirit of a strong state, instead allowing himself to be caught in a state of camaraderie with liberalized reformers who seek to guarantee a sense of freedom and equality over the very survival of our front. We, as the true successors to the Soviet Union, and greatest chance for the new Russian nation, must work to dispose the power Zukov holds if we seek to remain a powerful contender for the Western Russian power in the face of countless rivals alongside peering German hordes, ready to launch another war at any moment. His name shan't be solely, however, we cannot allow it to flourish in political spheres either. To Kajewski's confession. Don't think I don't know how the nods, you miserable horse sons, sharpen behind my back. I can see the tent in your eyes, anger, jealousy, and spite for the old babushka strutting around with Mikhail Tukachevsky's name. But some also ask a question. I'm sure many of you wish to answer it as well. It's one we've struggled to provide ever since Surovalv. Why? What happened? Listen here and listen well. You're getting your answer. It starts with one man's name, rather his ambitions. He was a conniving dude in the best of times, letting goons do the doing and dying for him while he climbs a presidium under everyone's noses. Man put power over principle and hit it well. It showed only when he saw the perfect chance. One of these chances was when the Grand Marshal ordered the tactical retreat. Imagine all the Union's finest, marshals, premiers, chairmen, bunched up like a sheaf of grain in one spot. Those bombs were German. 
Fortunately, he missed his chance, but the damage was done. Voroshilov's tactical retreat became a disorganized route. The Union scattered across Russia's east. Your friends and brothers and sons gave their lives not against a fascist, but against a coup designed or disguised, disguised in front of the fire. <clears throat> You will learn to hate Mikhail Suslov's name as much as I do. Tender, nurture it, stoke it, and now I'll bring each and every one of you hateful dudes with me to certificate. I'll drag the traitor out of his little citadel himself, show the world the face and deeds he hides in his shadow. When that time comes, his life is in your hands. You have a Torkoda. Don't disappoint me. So, a couple of comments. So, uh, there's not everybody, but a lot of people want me to play as Zukov. Well, we kind of already gone down the route playing as uh, Tukhachevsky. I didn't realize that there was a ton of support for me playing as Zukov. So, we're going to continue going down to Kajeski in this campaign. But in the future, whenever I play as the WRF again, I promise I will go down playing as Zukov. Because Zukov, he's a pretty important fella in history. So, so I'm sorry to the disappointment of several people. But, it is what it is. So, I, I had to make a decision early last game. And while technically we still could get him, technically, um, I don't think he can really catch up to us at this point in terms of influence. So, my apologies for that. Let's go ahead and grab more caps. Uh, let's grab this one. Batch production methods too. That'd be good. Next one. On the tour. But that's off. Ready for war. And basic combat schooling. More division trading time. More attack defense. Yes, please. Ready for war. Well, some uh, Russia vie for a sense of, sense of revenge against the Germans primarily and seek to let loose the hounds of war against the Nazi empire that sits bloatedly to the west. We realize that it will take some more time than the fire of revenge to guarantee our self, ourselves success in the future. Enemies defeat, of course, too. It'll take unity, but it'll take strength, it'll take numbers, and it'll take cooperation. While we can handle most of everything through the might of our army, cooperation is an entirely new beast. One which will require the abdication of several warlords, lest they seek to give their life for the dividing state. We shall call upon the days of the West Russian War, when the West Russian Revolutionary Front dominated the lands of Western Russia. And once more, we shall unite into a greater, more powerful Russian state, preparing itself for total unity of the Russian people, and strike back against the Nazi menace. Very good. A lot of political power. Let's see if we can grab some... Oh yeah, yeah. might as well, right? Mm, still not bad. Concerning level of factionalism. I still want more factories and manpower, so let's go with factories first. We can still get up a little bit more manpower. That would be nice. Oh, scavenge for loot first, though. So. Always scavenge for loot. Even though this is going to get screwed up anyways. Whatever. And go ahead. And what do they want from us? Peace. Ha. Nice. And workers, research facilities, schools. Uh, let's see. Expertise is going up anyways. Let's get some research. Because that start getting that going up as well. So, Research facilities. Thank you. Other comments. Apparently, so apparently, one or two of you guys told me at the time of me recording this that if we go down Zukov's path, his paths aren't completely 100% done yet. So that's also very good to know that Zukov's paths are not all fulfilled yet; they're not finished. And before we do train our troops, I want to make sure we have a nice stockpile of guns or political power as well. So ready for war. A great darkness looms over Russian lands. A darkness spreading an oppressive, enveloping fog of frigid destruction and mayhem. One which seeks to destroy to strangle the life out of any sense of Russian unity, establishing it as a worldwide empire while destroying us all. This director storms over the skies of Russia as it rains hellfire down and consumes all the waking senses of a, political, a potential unity and organization among the Russian people. This director is wielding the swastika on the German eagle upon its banner, however, remains as internally chaotic as the very chaos it sows throughout every land it washes over, as pretenders throughout the land seek to claim all lands the darkness holds for themselves. In the impending implosion which will finally wash away this darkness, we shall continue to prepare for the final exodus of the oppressive storm, and ready ourselves for war. One day the Reich will crumble, and the bombings will cease over Russian lands, and on that day the Fuhrer will finally realize how greatly the West Russian Revolutionary Front is ready for war. Anti-tank, or we'll get some infantry equipment, support equipment, and towed artillery. Love it. Because we don't have a lot of stuff here. We're doing okay. Support equipment is actually not looking too bad either. A little bit of lag. And what do we got? Oh, some guy. He's gone. Bye, guy. We can never do Snow Maiden. Oh, so it's a border war between Archangels and Onega? Oh, that's not bad. We don't have... Oh, look! Manpower! Not bad. We're actually mobilizing a little bit more now. Nice. Was it because we went to... 
There's military stuff. Four-year draft? Was that four-year draft we did? It was combat rules, military policing. It was schooling? I can't remember, because one of them gave us more... I was raising a conscription level, so... Um, we're 133%. Warlord recruitment, 1.54%. But we're at 5.3%. But whatever. Uh, heroic six, 46 years. <clears throat> 46 years ago. The spirit of the revolution was born within the soul of the Russian nation. Nevermore were we to tolerate the oppression of capitalistic and authoritarian exploitation under the perfidious Tsar. Nevermore were the proletariat going to sit idly by as the bourgeoisie continued to tear them apart, exploit them, and treat them as slaves. Several key figures made the revolution possible, from Vladimir Lenin to Nikolai Bukharin, and many other smaller figures meant to call upon the torch of communist cause in response. We are the holders of this great flame of revolution, the bearers of the communist soul, and the ones who are most ready and most prepared to see the Marxist agenda continue to live on in this fascist-dominated world, and which will continue this revolution, which will fight for our lives and fight for the greater sense of change and socialism in this world. Our spirit may be ba battered, but we may never be broken. Very nice. Oh, and that's all the manpower we get, huh? Cool. Um, if that's the case, let's, let's get rid of it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well. Oh, that's a little bit laggy. Let's take a look at these guys. So, you. Well, I think we're using both sets of infantry, 13 combat width. Um, do we have any. Do we have any spare guns? We really don't. I want to make these guys bigger, but. Hmm. Give these guys recon at least. Do we have any motorized? No, we don't. Make you guys even stronger, I suppose. Cool. Secure control. We need more stability. Man, I wish we could raid again. I really wish we could raid. That's alright. Mm, what's the next research done, actually? In about a month? That's not bad. Oh, we have 11 factories, too. Nice. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Five. That's not bad. Work against Zukov. Well, I think we'll be, kind of be okay if we're getting Tukhachevsky in Pawa. Uh, you know, get, grab me some infrastructure too. How's it, how's it coming along? Nothing's working. Okay. Cool. And a heroic 46 years. Beautiful. And a party for the party. A withered sigh. What am I staring at, Irium? Clear, clear liquid sloshed against the glasses bottle size as Irium Uvavarach. Swirled in front of Mikhail Tukhachevsky. Vodka, of course, from the Grand Marshal's collection I heard. Or possible the Marshal's frown sank deeper into his jowls and drink it, or will he continue wasting more time? Mikhail, Mikhail, Mikhail. Erionim tried it, singing an arm around his shoulder. You do know what it today is, right? I've been. I've better matters to attend to than babysitting drunken hooligans. Tukhachevsky glared at Erionim. 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 As he brushed off the arm before turning to the doorway. Now, if you'll excuse me. These drunken hooligans are watching, Comrade Marshal. Erionim. Gestured at the room, or do you not have an image to uphold? The marshal glanced back and met his officer's gazes, staring as gazelles do an oncoming truck. Already he regretted ever being lured to their little party, but no matter. He didn't say no to Mr. Eyes, last question after all. So Tukhachevsky swiped the bottle clean off the subordinate's hands and raised it high above his head. His gaze swept through the room, so to meet all 27 pairs of eyes with him. Look closely, children. The Red Army's finest general boom. For the first and last time, this is how a man of the October Revolution handles his vodka. Half a liter of Russian spirit disappeared in his gut in less than 10 seconds. Wow. Oh, plus it's heard the party's rocket cheers, and I will be right back. All right, everyone. So I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do the Trader General, we should do Across the Urals, or we should do the Fractured Republic. Now, there's an, actually there's a little bit of support for each side, but there's a little bit more support for us to do the Trader General, with Vologda. And actually, there's a comment for me to play as Vologda, I believe, as well. But people want... I think overall, there's a little bit more support for us to play as Vologda, the Trader General. The state of Vologda, founded the betrayal of General Ivanov to advance into German territory as a free state, a neutral zone for all Russians. Hearing the name of Vologda or Ivanov spoken would lead to some of our more motivated comrades to scoff and discuss. In such dire straits, however, all are willing to work with traders to ensure that the lone beacon of socialism in West Russia survives to shine its light upon humanity. We have forged closer economic bonds with Vologda, trading our industrial goods for food, as our diplomatic officers lobby for greater cooperation between it and the front. The porous border into the hatred of Rex Commissariat will also provide an additional way for food to flow in better times. The front will not have soup to cooperate with the traders and its enemies, but such concerns would have to be set aside for now. Our time will come. Very, very good, my friends. Very, very good. Uh, meet with veterans again. An ultimatum from Onega. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? And who's leading Onega? Ah, uh, Karpichnikov. If you'd like to read about him, go right ahead. 
Both are really good. I guess technically, he does have a unique focus tree. It is an obligation, huh? Interesting, interesting. Don't think they, they can reunite the the Russian states, but whatever. We're gonna do that. All right, I guess it's time for another war against Sonega. Why not? Ah, better infantry, infantry rifles. Very good. So we need to do that. Artillery. Let's get some better artillery. We are making artillery, I believe. So let's make sure we make better artillery, at the very least. Wow, this looks really bad. Minus 81% for factory output. Oof. Trader General followed up with... Food security. For the first time since the West Russian War, the front has had for itself procured a steady stream of food for its soldiers and workers in its territory. With a clear supply line, recalculated and regulated consumption of rations and infrastructure capable of distributing it, the front has avoided the constant looming threat of famine. Our soldiers now rest easy at night, knowing that meals are not hard to come by, provided that they work for their share. The capitalize on the success and improve morale further. We will review the regulated caloric intake previously set before the established trade routes. We will increase this, giving our soldiers more to eat in a day than they have for months or even years. For labor under socialism, maybe it's a war, but the world will know that no hunger, no soldier of the front goes hungry or wanting. Which is a very, very good thing. Alright, let's see what do we got here. Zukov is making moves and other stuff. We can actually purchase anti tank equipment. Let's go do that too. Um, he's making moves. I don't maybe mind trying. It's only 10 political powers. We could try it, maybe. See what happens. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it won't be good. Pay tribute. Thank you. As they should. More equipment. Thank you. Let's do it again, Onega. I love it when Onega does that. And Madagascar is falling apart. Well, I guess the Jewish part of Madagascar is gone. Rex Commissariat. Right, Madagascar or Militarstadt Madagascar. Yep, sucks to be Madagascar. <clears throat> Food security. Follow with Unite unto Dawn. For the first seven years, Dawn shines over Russia and the skies are quite silent. No more alarms, no more bombs. The planes that strip of the shattered remains of the old Union. In vain that they can defeat the united will of people determined to survive have not come for a few weeks. Germany requires them for a purpose, only comprehensible to the minds of Nazis. Whatever their intentions are, they are making a terrible mistake. The French shall shudder awake again, and the revolution shall proclaim once more. The French shall establish and reaffirm its authority over the waste that surround Arkhangelsk. We will pick up the pieces shattered by the German bombing. The French shall reforge itself. The Germans have given us an opportunity that we cannot afford to pass. Socialism that rule shall rule Russia again, and when that is accomplished, we shall die the world in red dawn. Nice. Very, very nice. Other comments. Let's see. Zukov's path, of course, is not complete yet. Play as you go to someday. Yeah, I do plan on playing as you go to. He seems like a fun little guy to play as. He starts off at war with Baratia and Sablin and such. But obviously, well, so you go to gone right now. So go figure. I will play as him someday though. Mm, 91 66, that's that's pretty far. The Republic of Finland's looking a little too thick for us right now. Let's see, someone recommends we take out Zataust, actually. Yeah, we will eventually. We'll take out Zataust as well as Komi. And or if you'd like to read about this, go right ahead. Untrustworthy people. Oof. Oh, considering factionalism within the front is critical. Well, whatever. War planning. Anything else here interesting? Not really. Yeah, someone says plays Zotaus or take out Zotaus, take out Komi. And someone recommends we play the Logda someday. Oh! Well, Komi went down a certain path. Uh, I don't think the Logda has a unique focus tree, so. Oh, Lev Gumilev. Well, we really don't like him then. Ah, critical instability. I love it. Let's go meet with some veterans again. Now it's concerning, that's fine. Fine with us. We're gonna get how much political power? 0.25 every day? That's not a lot. Now is it? <coughs> Borov Shilov. Very nice. Still no manpower, but whatever. Hitler's dead. Thank goodness. And four ended on, my friends. You get more political power in the end of the Iron Storm. Ben is the Long War. Very good. <clears throat> Anything else different here? New, different? That's something that we want? Not really, no. And do we get a new focus, maybe? Maybe not? No? Okay, the end of the Iron Storm. The German planes have always saved a good quantity of their fuel and ordnance to bomb the front's last few industrial centers. Air shelter alerts had always been part of the life for the FWR 
WRRFs, civilian population, long, boring hours spent in bomb shelters punctuated now and then by a few instances of terrifying rumbling. The last few months had seen rare bombing. The Luftwaffe's habitual randomization of bombing runs had grown even more erratic as what remained of available supplies was used up by the aero bases and musket beam. As rumors had it, the winds of war were blowing closer to home as the fear's dying breath grew ever more strained. The front's general staff had long marked the start of every day by tallying the number of bombing sorties. Now the graph slipped down rapidly as the number of grounded German planes soared ever higher. Rid of the fear of the German vultures, the front supply convoys moved more confidently. So would the bandits, traders, and reactionaries beyond the front's border, of course. But the general staff of the Red Army did not fear the Russian rabble. They had won the Civil War 40 years ago in the 50s. The brave soldiers of the workers' state had almost brought down the German colossus. It mattered not how the WRRFs would array themselves. The front's generals would fight on, leading their men on to the inevitable path of history. The day of liberation approached. Once the German planes flew their last, the war's unification would begin. We will bury them. End of the bombings shall commence very soon, especially once the civil war begins. So, Luftwaffe South bombing, so we shall survey our lands and begin reclamation. So, the German civil war must be spawning now because it only when the game lags this hard. Yep, there it goes. Very nice. So, it begins, and let it begin anew. Ah, there goes Burgundy, too. Ah, Burgundy. I love Burgundy. What a great place to be. Bulgaria sides with the Germans, huh? Alright, so... We have 57 more guys. That's nice. We still have this, guys. Can we stop bombing each other? Bombing the Russians and so you can, guys can bomb each other instead? The bombing stopped. There we go. For a long time, life in a very large portion of Russia had been defined by the German terror bombing campaign. Entire generations of Russians have grown up in blast ruins, always watching the skies and ready to run for cover the moment the dark figures of bombers themselves are spotted. An entire generation of government, whatever the ideology, has struggled with the establishing infrastructure or industrial base of any kind. And what little is built is promptly destroyed. But not anymore. Millions of Russians have not had to make desperate runs to safety for days. Repaired civilian and, civilian and military infrastructure has progressed and not been destroyed in turn. New constructions still stand and our realization is done. The bombers have stopped. To those with access to information from the outside who believe that the civil war or civil chaos now engulfing the hated Reich and its col col colonial extensions in the Reich's commissariats have rendered it impossible for their aerial efforts to continue. To those without, it is believed by many to be a gift from God. Even as ordinary Russians celebrate with something approaching delirium, however, others speak with dark clouds on the horizon. The many Russian statelets, no longer suffering paralysis at the bombs of the Germans, are now free to look outwards. Only time will tell how they choose to proceed. Very, very good. Finally. The end of the bombings. At first, the high command thought it was a fluke. Then the weeks passed, and the silent skies did not budge. The bombing had destroyed and devastated Russia, which had come now to an end. Everywhere throughout Russia, or the front's territory and Russia itself, the giant laid to rest so long goes awaking. However, there can be no delay. The illegitimate warlords to the south of us will make their move. The front, for the lone sake of its survival, must act in tandem, for socialism can no, no longer suffer defeat. The front will continue the reconsolidation and establishment of its authority over northern Russia. Workers and soldiers both will repair the roads and patch up communication hubs. Without fear of co coercion, we will rise again, and the Union of Old shall stand once more, its members untarnished by neither defeat nor failure. The march of communism will continue. Oh, that's it. Great. Reestablish farming. Uncover the industry? I like that one. After the defeat and retreat of the Red Army Air Force in repelling the German bombing of West Russia, a large amount of the industry that the front now possesses, it has to hide for the fear of the German shrapnel tearing apart valuable heavy machinery that the front could not replace. With the bombing over and the onslaught pause, the front can uncover these factories from hiding and work and resume within them, as fires will roar out and steel flow like rivers of labor. The front will tear down the camouflage of these factories and workers will crowd their floors once again. The front's soldiers and citizens will do no longer suffer from a lack of consumer goods and industrial necessities. Soon no one recognizes the meaning of lack itself, as once as Marx once foretold in his writings. To each according to their ability, to each according to their needs. Very good. Zukov's still making moves. Uh, we can raid Onega, because we might as well. There goes England. England's on fire. And that's okay with us. And the Poles are making moves as well. Warsaw Uprising. English Civil War begins. Very good, everyone. Very good. Keep it up. Um, I, I still want to do some industrial investments. Oh, that just gave us a free factory immediately. Nice. So was that a military or... That was a civilian factory. Okay. Africa Shield, huh? We have five. And we're, and we're making stuff. It's going to take to 88 to make stuff, though. Holy crap. That's a bit long for me. What if we made roads instead? Is that cheaper? Yeah, 64. I'd rather do that one, then. Uncover the industry. Reopen the mines. That's not bad. That's not bad. 
Reestablishing farming. During the years of the bombing, agricultural activity on already rare and complex issue in the cold north became harder. It's needed that the government nor the workers willing to leave lives and tools as clear targets for German planes. With regard to the Germans over Russian skies, the high command has now decided that farming in the open is not feasible again. No longer shall the front be dependent on the Ill illegitimate contenders to its powers, and alone shall stand as a beacon of socialism in Russia. The fields that laid in the waste for long shall find them growing on, growing on them the bountiful fruit of Russia once again. No longer the front. No soldier of the front shall ever find themselves without food, starving in the cold in the name of socialism. Soon no one in the service will ever know the feeling of hunger, with the front shattering its vestiges to the winds. We will move ever forward to the dawn of tomorrow. I mean, guys, you can keep doing this. And I recommend it, but... New directive? Cool. Zukov began his day reading the news from the north. Our Congo's top press has seen fit to confirm the general suspicion about the decreasing rate of German bombing. With Germany itself spiraling closer and closer to civil unrest, the amount of resources allocated to the terror bombing was dwindling fast. Soon the Russian anarchy might end. This will make Zukov's assignment much easier. The oil and agricultural sectors he had been the task we had been tasked to develop would finally be free to use a full range of industrial techniques. Supply chains would be free from the risk of being bombed during the day, making it easier to import the crucial resources the front needed. The front's higher ups expected Zukov to increase the quota of goods brought to the front for war effort. The general had no intention of failing this task. The general thought to rival to have always arrived to the east. Tukhachevsky would no doubt see additional troop requests from Arkhangels. The upcoming wars of liberation would be an excellent opportunity to show loyalty and competence to the Red Army's leadership. Zukov hoped the front would not be distracted by court politics at, the t at this crucial time. We will craft the, the worker's sword. Very good. Scams for even more loot. Let's win the war this battle first and then we'll raid some more. So that'll be good. This way it weakens them first and then we can just do whatever we want against them. Enemies defeated? Great. Political power, stability, and more guns. That's how we get free guns all the time. Look at that. Even better. Support guns looking really good, though. We need more anti-tank, though. We need a lot of things. Oof. Could be paid. They attack us for our loot, and then we demand that they give us their loot. I love it. Agricultural methods are so good to invest in. Milbjorg Ku in, in Norway. I almost said Scotland for some reason. Reestablish the farmers. Farming. Good. And we'll maybe get some artillery too. Actually, does A and C have a oh, unique focus tree? Uh, they don't. That's, that's disappointing. On guns and giving. Mikhail Voronin was a powerful figure to many, having served alongside the front lines against the Germans. Uh, he may not have been an officer back then, but by God in heaven, did a lot for some heavy qualifications to be given to him in the election for leadership in a small village. Plus, being a father helped up a lot in being able to know what it meant to do some good things for the community. However, it almost felt like if none of that mattered in the next few mo moments, or all of it mattered. Borel and the insurer as heck didn't know anyone anymore, didn't know anymore, as the caravan pulled into the snowy thicket. Out of the middle car slipped a certain Mr. Laganov had been tasked with meeting the one he was meant to coordinate an arms deal with. However, with potential death on the horizon thanks to his lord's attacks against the pipe of Slatos, Mikhail was, was left unsure. So, Mr. Laganov, I know that the sales are off the table for today. However, with Major Consul Dragunov's expertise and wisdom, Perhaps this is a chance we can come to an agreement, Mikhail said. Of course, his bright smile could do wonders for many. However, no level of falsified pleasantries could mask the anxiety riddling Mikhail's spine. Your people get their guns, don't worry. The major council will approve of further transactions for the near future with your people. We shall meet in the same spot bi-weekly. You'll get guns, you pay us, got it? Mikhail, suffering the sh effects of shock, nervousness, and dread, was amazed by the success of the operation. Absolutely, sir, whatever you need, we can provide... But before Mikhail Voron then could finish what he had to say, the gun dealer was already turned around and heading towards back his caravan. As the fierce engines blitz against the Russian snow, all is forgiven, I suppose. Nice, and that's not looking too bad, dude. Fifty more, fifty-nine more guys in our army. Awesome. 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 A little bit of lag here and there, reestablish farming, and then resume military exercises. During the. Uh, during the duration of the German bombing campaign, the high command decided to put a halt to ongoing military exercises. It was ineffective that the trained men would be sitting ducks against an onslaught of German bombers. It's clear as day. While this happened, training continued in secret, subdued, and submerged in the fog and dark of night. The state of discipline, meanwhile, deteriorated as recruits and veterans alike languished in nervous activity or inactivity. The time to be still and unmoving is ended. The exercises shall continue, and the front soldiers will steel themselves to the demands of war. Troops will patrol the roads in more numbers than before. As the warlords of the South awaken to the fact of the bombing, which war shall, con shall come to the front sooner or later. They will not want us find us wanting, as socialism will march up from the gates of our Congos and once again ready to reclaim the world. Just in case, we're going to grab that early on. Nice, there we go. Even more basic artillery. Beautiful. It's only 21 days, too. Not bad. And soon enough, we'll have some bash production methods, too. And we should probably do more, more of our land auction. Hmm. Secure control. Can't scan for stuff lot yet. Good. Uh, so he must be... Zukov must be increasing the factionalism within the party. 
which might be good, which might not be good. So, dig up the caches. In the immediate aftermath of the West Russian War and the subsequent bombing campaign, the front decided to hide its XS equipment and camouflage stockpiles and warehouses. The majority, however, are buried in unmarked spots in northern Russia, waiting for the day that the front can reclaim its rightful place as a successor state of the old union. In times like these, when the gun and men are scarce, it would be better to lack just one and not both. The front will send its soldiers to the places where the buried equipment is located. They'll dig them out and return them to Arkhangelsk or the nearest depot or deposit of weapons and ammunition. Meanwhile, the front will throw the doors of the warehouses and stockpiles open, its contents distributed among the soldiers as befits the role. The illegitimate claimants to the south will no longer regard the front with weakness but fear. Support equipment and a lot of more guns. Arkhangelsk's new directive. General Tukhachevsky had expected the telegram from Arkhangelsk. His own intelligence corps, limited as it was, applied the decreasing number of frequency of bombing runs. Treaties applied the, applied the routes between Western Russia and Muscovy and had brought the rumors of rising tensions in Germany. A German civil war seemed to be on the horizon, with, and with it would come the end of the terror bombing campaign. Arkhangelsk expected much of him. Telegram rose, or from the front's command, informed him of the upcoming opportunity caused by a breakdown of the Reich. Resources would be free to move without the fear of aerial harassment. Offensive operations would be free to begin against the reactions and traitors of the Russian anarchy. Tukhachevsky would be at the center of this. The other commanders expected him to step up his training program and convert a flood of raw resources and give green re recruits into hardened army corps. The general thought of Zhukov receiving orders. He smiled. High command would no doubt see the silence as a way for ambitious generals to prove themselves. No better time for General Tukhachevsky to secure his ascendancy once and for all. Love no cause of complaints from me. A little bit more lag, but happy 1964. It's going to be a great year. I have a feeling South Africa might be experiencing a little bit of uh, issues. Probably. And actually, we could probably do Operation Snowman if we wanted to. Ooh, but I want to do a whole military parade. We lose 100 man. Oh, we don't have 100 manpower. And 250 guns? We get more army professionalism? And we lose, I guess, 300 guns in total. Uh, I kind of like that. Political campaign. Cool. And we should have that one done soon ish. And then we'll reopen the mines. <clears throat> As the tree of the front drew to a close and the bombing campaign started, the mines operating in northern Russia that had poured steel and aluminum to the rest of the Union shut themselves down for the fear of collapse by the tremors of German shrapnel. The front was very wary of sending miners and equipment to exploit it during the campaign. With the departure of the Germans, however, the front now sees no reason to let these assets languish in atro atrophy and dis disuse. The high command will issue a directive for miners and workers to work these mines again, while a transportation system will apply the routes to and from Arkhangels, carrying needed resources to factories there for are there, the front's factories will hammer steel and aluminum into tanks, planes, and guns. These will be useful in the struggle for the unification of this old union. And from there on, the war for world revolution. And now they're probably going to attack us again, hopefully. And then we'll attack them once again in the back. Which would be a great thing. Five days left for batch production methods. More output, thank you. Uh, that's coming along, that's coming along. We actually have a, a surplus of infantry equipment. Wow, this is weird. Fortunately, I would like. Oh, uh, well, actually, which one? If so, I want everyone to become Gardis Gias. What do I pronounce it as? We need more manpower for that, but it's all right. Let's see. Let's go ahead and get some of this stuff too. I say well, I want land auction, but I still want to get some of this stuff done too. So, it is what it is. Uh, cool. Can we do anything here yet? Probably not. No. What? It'll soon happen. Soon happen. Archangel's calling. Grave news has made itself known. Archangel's the Grave Marshal Voroshilov. Voroshilov has guided the front through the toughest years. Is now dead. As the doctors and coroner scramble to deduce the cause of death, it's seen shock or sent shockwaves through the front's chain of command. The front now braces itself for another radical shift, change in leadership as its figurehead was for the last decade fades away. Whoever takes control of the front is set to shape the destiny of the Union to come, with haste and without delay. The front must select a successor to the Grand Marshal's seat. The two obvious contenders are the Marshals Tukhachevsky and Zukov, each with their five tomes to the south. Whoever the front chooses to be its leader, it must make haste, for the world is changing, and opportunity does not wait. No, it shall not wait. There we go. Oh, they're not going to attack us this time? Come on, guys. I would like to train more troops, though. Go and meet with veterans first, though. It helps lower factionalism, which is good. Hey, we're actually building stuff. Nice. At least it makes sense to actually build stuff up there. Since we can actually get stuff done. Initiate raid. Scavenge for loot. Yes, please. They have one division, and they refuse tribute. Okay, so maybe we can win here, then. Or actually have a fight. They might still win, just because we're fighting over a river. And our guys aren't the strongest, but still. We need more manpower. We need more guns and such. Oh, we're actually beating this guy up pretty nicely. 
Okay, raid successful. Great, I love treasure. And workers, I want more schools this time, maybe. Research schools. I'm gonna go with schools. Not bad, not bad. And who are you? Kulikov. Treasure. If you like to read about treasure, go right ahead. A relic of the past? Oh, when I go. Very good. Now they're trying to beat us up. Man, they took a while to do this one this time, didn't they? Well, my friends. Like Angus calling. Local campaign. Rookie against Zukov. Very nice. The death of Voroshilov. Today, Grand Marshal Marshal Clement Yefremenovich, your uh, Voroshilov, the leader of the West Russian Revolutionary Front and former People's Commissar for Defense under Bukharin, has passed away due to old age. For the past few decades, he's continued the desperate conflict against the Third Reich. In the last years of his life, Voroshilov has worked desperately in spite of the German terror bombings to turn the West Russian Revolutionary Front into an actual state which represents the Russian people. Trying to balance the roles of Georgi Zukov and Mikhail Tukhachevsky and keeping them cooperating. The favorite successor seems to be either Zukov or Tukhachevsky, as they are certainly the most popular generals among the remnants of the Red Army that remain loyal to Voroshilov. These two generals have amassed many followers of their own and have, until now, only really worked with each other because of Voroshilov. Both have been working behind the scenes, attempting to gain influence with the front's Stavka, attempting to persuade it to march forward in their point of view. Many believe that Stavka have already selected a preferred candidate already and are preparing to declare him the next leader of the front, as their view being proven right when the heir to Voroshilov was declared to be somebody, but I want to get this done first. Now I clean up the corpses. Good. Tukhachevsky, hello. And I apologize for those of you who want Zukov, but we'll play as the WRF again someday. The Grand Marshal. In the intervening years between the West Russian War and now, Tukhachevsky, better known as the Red Napoleon, has been sequestered in the outposts of the front. Kept far away from power in the halls of Archangelsk, despite his prowess and genius, as well as his undying faith in the eventual triumph of socialism, he remained unrecognizable or unrecognized for his talents, atrophying away in the plus sect. Still, he abided his time and waited his return to strike. With the other contenders to power gone, he has emerged as the only as an indispensable or indisputable leader of the front, leading it as a worthy successor to Lenin's and Bukharin's legacy. Before he can move on to other, more urgent affairs, his inauguration cannot stand a delay. He will announce to Russia and the rest of the world that nothing shall hold back the waves of the revolution until the red flag flies in skies forever and forevermore. Very good. Oh, we got rid of Voroshilov because he's not here. Uh, you have level pop attack, so... Andrei Gretchko? Hey, we read about you earlier. And aggressive assaulter, even more breakthrough, and... Oh, nice. Holy crap. He's got a butt-ton of of uh, attack, which I love, 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 love. Just in case, though. You never know. You never know. Oh, uh, we no longer this for that stuff down there. That's fine, whatever. Infrastructure would be nice. Um. Oh, yeah, look. How do we... Oh, of course, this is what I thought they would do. We're actually mobilizing more? How come? Combat rolled, maybe? I don't know. Oh, did we actually integrate? Oh, we did integrate these guys. Plus X. Nice. We're probably going to invent that they don't like us that we did that. But whatever. Put them on the line, too. Thank you. Um, you guys are not bad. I'm actually going to probably convert that to a garrison division. So. Anti-fascist something brigade or something like that. Uh, we'll call these garrisons. Which would be fine. Pinay, elected president of France, huh? Well. Alright, not bad. Um, very nice. And did we. Did we core this stuff? Oh, we did core that. Nice. Very good. Very good. Oh, you guys are. What happened down here? Why are you so weak? Zukov, how many divisions do you have? No manpower. How do you have only one division? Zukov. He has no armor. Or anything like that. What the heck? Now, I love easy wars, and this makes sense for an easy war, but... That doesn't make any sense. What the heck? Gukta? Alright. Grand Marshal, thank you. Uh, present arms. The state of the front's equipment and discipline appalled Tukhachevsky. The soldier station here might be sufficient to any other Grand Marshal, but to him it was simply not enough. The laxity and indolence of the troops are intolerable. Socialism, therefore communism, demands more. Perfection is the only way to satisfy it, and that path is where Tukhachevsky will take the front. Correcting this tendency will be Tukhachevsky's first step on that road. The sol soldiery will clean their rifles, obeying the spirits, and in no scene of alcoholism or drug addiction shall long besmirch the fabric of the army. The weaponsmiths and technicians will repair the guns and tanks, and the factories will roar as the fires of industry awaken. None shall find themselves wanting in the means of war as 
All will receive their share to each according to their ability. And more guns. I love the guns. If we're going to get even more guns, I'm going to go ahead and make this division even thicker. There you go. Even better. We got a lot of political power, too. There goes the manpower. Yep. Trainer troops again. Nice. I'd like to take out those guys. Ooh, better artillery. Let's go ahead and grab some land doctrine from here on out. Um, do we use planes or not? Helicopters? Ooh, you know what? Maybe we'll try to use helicopters then. After this, we're going to start researching helicopters and choosing the correct helicopters to use. Which we need transport helicopters. Now, I'm not sure who we're going to attack first. I'm going to assume it's maybe these guys, because we don't like fascists and national socialists here, so... We can actually purchase anti-tank equipment. We lost last time. But it's only 10 x um, political power. It's only 10 political power, so... It's not that bad. Can we actually raid other people? We already had a successful raid, so we'll see what happens. Maybe we can, maybe we won't be able to. People might want to raid us, which is not very good for them, so... Since we're here... You guys are nice as 10 combat with, but that's not going to be enough. Let's get motorized. Motorized. That would be nicer. That would definitely be nicer. Next up, after present arms. That's going to take a while to do. March. Oh, yes, please. The army has been progressing to meet Tukhachevsky's vision at last. Acts of indiscipline and insubordination are at their all time lows, and the number of weapons in our stockpiles is booming. It's ready to do its highest duty the liberation of Russia against revisionism and reaction. Tukhachevsky will be at its head. Providing inspiration and leadership to any who fights for socialism. But first, a few, show of force. The front has been enacted for too long, and its enemies have taken it lightly. No more. The crews will practice their tank maneuvers, the soldiers will drill the marches, and the pilots will exercise their tricks for the grandest military parade West Russia has ever seen is to start. Let the illegitimate pretenders quake in their boots as the only true son of the old Union rise again and take its place among the nations, in which we get more army professionalism and 20% more war sport. Wow, that is actually really, really good. Can't wait to get more guns, though. Very nice. Oh, raids? Well, can we actually do Onega again? Because it's so easy against them. No, they have no things. Blog has got nothing. Thief territory? I'd love to do Order of St. George, but these guys... How strong are they? They don't seem super strong, but I could be wrong. The War Within. They do have some IFVs. That's pretty not good. Oh, Vorkuta. Yeah, let's do Vorkuta. Nice, there we go. That's good. Industrial investments. Actually, how is our industry doing? We still need quite a bit more anti tank. And our, what happened to our factories? Well, go down one, two, three, four. We gotta get some more anti tank as well. Hmm, that is unusual, but okay, whatever. Industrial investments. Oopsie. Oh, crap. I wanted industrial investments. Oh, well, whatever. Yeah, we can still do that one. Good. Thank you very much for your contribution to our efforts. That'd be good. Wow, we need so much more of that. So much more of this. Guns are looking great. 500 some. Plenty of support equipment as well. Love it. Actually, we could throw some on here too. Oh, we already have some on here. We already have recon for that stuff. So. Cool. March. All right. Operation White Flag. If they fail to surrender, we will immediately enter. I kind of want to take out Comey as fast as possible. Take the word. The academic base it does improve. Slightly decreased coring time could be really good, though. Industrial equipment, though. Ooh, Order St. George. That would be easy to take out, right? So... I want to do Operation Burning Cross. The self-serving theocrats of Ganey are a relic of the bygone era, even older than that of the stars. Stubbornly, they cling to their ancient methods of control and oppression, thinking that it will protect them from the march of history and progress. The time has come to teach them that their faith, if, if it even exists, is sorely misplaced. We shall present their geriatric priesthood with a choice. Surrender everything to us immediately or face the wrath of the Red Army. In either case, it will be quickly made clear that their god does not exist to come to their rescue, and that the proletariat cannot be fooled by their lies and deceit forever. Then we can begin the process of banishing the blight of Christianity from Russia forever. Take him out while we can. Alright, we have only nine divisions, but that should be more than enough for these guys. And while it's not worth that much, still won't take them out. Go and, oh, we can't secure control anymore. Oh, that sucks. But, 
We need to save some political power to start coring stuff once we take over enemies. And especially if they refuse to uh, stay with us. Himmler victorious, huh? Oh, Spears looking pretty good. New recruits, the trio of Red, Red Army's newest Andre, Sashura, and Peter stand in a circle on the floor of the barracks. A modest pile of cigarettes guarded by two queens and seven diamonds lay between them all. I'll raise you three cigarettes, says Sashura, tossing them into the pot. He pulled a fourth out of his jacket and stuck it in his seat before lighting it. He breathed in deeply and blew a stream of smoke directly into Peter's face. Ah, screw off, coughed Peter, waving away the smoke with his king of spades and a heart of aces, or ace of hearts. What's your issue? Why are you here? You threw in three of his own cigarettes. Call. Why are any of us here? asked Andre with genuine curiosity. I recall I call and raise by two. Is it gently pushing the five circuits across the floor? So sure shrugged. Dunno, I just am. I he just took another drag, I fold, he discarded his cards, keeping his faces to the ground. I'm here to fight for Russia, said Peter. Obviously, what other reason would you have for joining the army? He lifted his hand to review his cards and glanced at Andre. I fold, you're not taking my last cigarettes. Andre smiled and gathered his prize into his hands. He picked out the cleanest one and fed into it. He leaned over to Sashura, who quickly set it ablaze, pouring nicotine and warmth into his friend's lungs. I'm here to win cigarettes. You know, maybe we should go ahead and maybe stop doing that thing. They refuse their terms, huh? Order to St. George refused to respond positively to our generous offer of surrender and amnesty. Troop movements from within the, our, their boards have been reported by our spiders, and it seems that they are preparing to repel an armed incursion by our forces. They, of course, are unaware that doing so will merely delay their bitter end. On their border, we shall raise the red flags, deliver their final warning. They refuse our most generous first officer, and we must penalize them for such thorough prosecution of the government if they surrender. We shall make it there absolutely clear that this is the best and last diplomatic offer they shall receive. Our armies are ready, and our officers are are already convening. Our armies are ready, and officers are convening to defeat the fortifications that our potential enemy has revealed to us in the panic to present a viable resistance. There exist two options, and two only. Surrender, or t face total annihilation at the hands of the triumphant Red Army. The easy way or the hard way? It's your choice to make, son. And... Nick, oh, Tricky Dick is gone. Okay. That wasn't what I was expecting. Seriously, I would... I, if I was these guys, I'd probably surrender. Like... Okay, there refuse a final warning. The time for a final warning to be accepted has come and gone. The only solution left is war. A comprehensive total war should be executed to utterly crush the opposition present within the Order of St. George. Our officers shall be ordered to begin their advance immediately, and artillery to begin shelling in order to cover the initial attack. But the surveillance of the positions were right completely against us, complete. Uh, the enemy has no hope of resisting the overwhelming fury of our attack. The declaration of formal hostilities shall coincide with the landing of the first shell in their territory. We have shown mercy for traitors in the motherland. So be it. Operation Burning Cross. And then we need to own this territory, so we'll probably actually do... Oh, there we go. We can't do anything else because we're at war. Oh, do we... Oh, we already beat him. Wow, that was fast. That was actually very fast. I would love to do control, but we got to core this area. Oh, Gainey's ours. Is that it? Okay, they're gone. Not bad. We got the plot. Well, mm, Cool. Operation Peacemaker. I want to do the white flag. Which one's easier to beat up first? Five to seven divisions over there. Three to five. We'll, we'll go to war with Vlogda first then. Operation White Flag, the friends of personal history of the Vlogda. At the tail end of the West Russian War, Vasily Ivanov, then general of the front, looked at the way the wind was blowing and stopped advancing. The remnants of his army formed the city of Vlogda, and a so called neutral zone for all Russians. His cowardice and betrayal had won him land and power, a mockery of any ideas he had ever had. For Tukhachevsky, however, Ivanov is an old comrade. There might be a slight glimmer of faint trace of the man he used to be. His love and care for his people might even be true. Tukhachevsky will make him an offer surrender and rejoin the front, or die fighting against it. Should he choose the latter, Tukhachevsky's army will crush Vlogda, showing to, to the other illegitimate pretenders to the West Russian states the consequences of abandoning the socialist revolution good 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 and gaining's got to be next please oh my goodness we have only 0.42 a day oh after this one we've got to start reaching helicopters uh, it's gonna take some serious time to research helicopters hopefully when we get to the regional stage then we can get a third research slot which happens every single time so if you could declare war against a oh the Logda surrenders. The Logda accepted our demand of surrender, turning over their arms, standing their military down, transfer the administration of their territory to the front. Already, inspection of their armed forces began, as well as retraining and re-education were necessary in order to ensure a reliable auxiliary corps. With this fortunate turn of events, our timetable for unification of West Russia has been set forward greatly, and we can freely begin comprehensive integration of the newly acquired territory into our own organs. A military government is established over the region, with officers that distinguish themselves and their past conquests become the provisional governors, pending the recruitment of local administrators. Excellent. Excellent. That's awesome, awesome, awesome. We don't get their soldiers, which actually kind of looks not good for us. Whatever. Great. Close the channels. Nationalize their stuff. I would love to do that. 
I would love to slightly decrease scoring time, but that's going to take too long for us, so Operation Peacemaker. During the tumultuous and chaotic retreat of the front during the West Russian War to the city of Siktivgar, treachery struck. Mikhail Suslov, in the middle of the chaos, attempted a power play that would eventually shatter any capabilities that the front had. Breaking free from it, the Republic of Komi now stands a traumatic reminder of the old front's failures and a disgraceful celebration to the notions of liberalism and multi-party democracy. An analyst dishonorable mark upon socialism history. Tukhachevsky will be merciful. He, like the old Genghis Khan before him, shall send an envoy to Komi. He will demand the leaders responsible for the coup, and the rights to militarily occupy the territory as part of the front. Should they refuse, he will unleash upon them the wrath of vengeance the, upon the thousands of upon thousands of the dead to repay them for the betrayal. And too bad we can't core all this stuff immediately. Gosh darn it. But uh actually probably Vologda first, maybe? Uh Vologda. Yeah, actually, yeah, definitely do Vologda first, because there's way more population here. 45 days, that's still not bad. That's really not too bad at all. 10 days left, come, and they're going to refuse their terms. If you like to read about this, go right ahead. Um, so, that's the same thing as last time. Hopefully we can march straight in. Where are our motorized? Oh, they're up here. Oh, we can just take the car then, pretty easily then. Hopefully. 17 factories, not bad. Slowly losing all the manpower we've already built up. They refuse the final warning. All right, so be it. Our GDP is not looking bad, though. There we go. March in, my boys. March in. And actually, we can do another one as well. Which would be nice. Another focus. Uh, let's do this one. Nationalized Vlog as well. There was a time when Vlog could claim its independence from the front. During it, it grew, it grew capital by profiting off the trade flow between Komi and Kostroma and into Muscovine. The Germans reacted with something akin to a tacit approval as Vlog was not a state that preyed on the nature of the large, poor sport. Thus, Vologda was ensconced in a power position of power, with everything they gained and nothing to lose. But the years are behind us now. The front has returned to Vologda, bringing its ideas with it. Tukhachevsky was outraged to find that, in the meantime, Ivanov, despite being a former communist, welcomed capitalism into his fiefdom. Now will be the time to change that. These private held assets, proof of the theft against the workers, will be seized by the state and given to the army. These will prove themselves useful in the ongoing liberation. Consumer goods factories goes down by 20%. Wow, more factory output for 270 days. Holy bad words. It doesn't matter if we lose in some areas. Combined operations are nice. We captured the arsenal, my friends. Now, I'd love to do this, but if we want to use helicopters, we got to go this way immediately. So, Siktivkar, arsenal captured. We have secured the arsenal of Siktivkar, a major stockpile of military weaponry that could prove decisive in securing victory in West Russia. Previously in the hands of West Russian Revolutionary Front, it came to the position of the fledgling Komi Republic when the WRRF led Siktivkar. Komi used the arsenal to maintain order inside its notoriously unstable capital and establish itself as a regional power, but even with full access to it, was unable to prevent its loss. The arsenal contains firearms, explosives, tanks, and chemical weaponry, a fearsome collection for any would be conqueror. Having taken it, we are at hefty advantage, providing proudly wielding the weapons that will bring us victory in West Russia. The perpetual shortage resource or resource shortage of the post Soviet era or order. Every gun counts. Our control over the arsenal will afford us all the equipment we need to impose our authority over the region. Locked and loaded. Nice. Alright, so we got that. That's not bad. You guys are moving in. I'm gonna go ahead and go straight down there. Where's the capital? Uh, uh hmm. Well, even without me leading too much, we still seem to be doing fairly okay. Oh, what? Are oh, we fighting these guys too? Oh, I guess President Kennedy. Oh, I guess we are fighting Vyatka. I didn't realize that. Oh, that sucks. Wait, so... When did we start fighting those guys? I need you guys to hurry up and kill off these enemy divisions. Go, 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 go. I need you to hold. Good. They've got to be giving up soon, right? The motor is doing a great job. Keep these guys in place. That's all I want you to do is just hold them in place. There they go. Uh, we captured this again, okay. And we, okay, we lost it, but we got it. Mm. So we lost it again, what the heck? Alright, so everyone hold. I didn't realize we were at war with these guys as well, so. Vyatka might be a little bit more of a problem here. Oh, there goes all of our manpower. God dang it. Um, if you guys could win, I'm, I'm totally okay with that. And I want to read the next focus as well. Close the channels, why not? For many Russians, a porous border of the Reichs Commissariat presents an opportunity. To most, it, it is a target to loot and raid, as the forces guarding the boundaries were often thinly staffed and lightly equipped. Switching personnel and equipment to a log meant quite the opposite. It was a place to trade. 
Though through Kostroma and into Muscovy, the smugglers sneak into German territory carrying highly needed contraband and selling to a high price. Tukhachevsky has agreed that all these channels must be closed. We'll track down the routes and paths used by these rats to enter Muscovy and post sharpshooters overlooking them. These snappers will shoot all persons claiming or aiming to cross into the Muscovy without explicit permission from the Grand Marshal. Socialism does not need cooperation between the Germans and us, and after, after all, they are our greatest enemy. Not bad, not bad. There's still any more soldiers on the front, though, which sucks, but whatever. Uh, what, what do we have here? Oh, purchase military access. Why would we want military access to them? Um, well, they attacked. It's time for me to consider attacking them, too, maybe? It's over a river, which really sucks, but whatever. Alright, looks like most of our soldiers are on the border. Head on in, boys, if you can. Take, take the motorized with you. And hopefully, that would be great if we could end this episode taking out uh, these guys. Get Vyatka. There you go. Beautiful. Actually, I'm going to help have you guys push in too, if you guys can. I don't think we have any planes though, which really kind of sucks. If that's the case, don't let them move. Do not let them move. And you guys are going to go immediately move in here too. Oh, uh, we cannot win there. That sucks. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you flipping don't. Crap, we're about to get in circle too. Hey, we got some divisions. Finally, another division to be made. Or to be had. Good. Keep these guys in place. Get down there quickly. God dang it. Alright, so if we can't win there, so be it. You're gonna help down here, though. You guys are slowly waiting down here, maybe? Good. Why don't you guys come down here? Go there, go there. Cut these guys off. Both of you attack right here, too. Uh, you guys can just kind of hold these places, people here first. Good. Keep them in place. Keep them in place. Enter. Come on, go, 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 go. Keep them in place. Watch Kurdistan's gone. Okay, game. Don't lag that much, please. All right, and we'll do integrate vlog dub. Before the despicable act of cowardice on the part of its founder, Vologda was once part of the front. In the intervening years between the West-Russian War and now, a state of Vologda existed in an illegitimate government that betrayed the ideals of socialism. A cultural gap has emerged between the citizens of the former state having never lived under socialism and the average worker of the front. It doesn't have to be. With both the private assets secured and the smugglers dealt with, Tukhachevsky has now ordered a wholesale reintegration of the Vologda back into the front. Like in the olden days of the old Union, he will establish a military district to enforce his control over the locals, ensuring that the revolution is free from the risks of betrayal. It will stand as an internal testament of socialism's triumph over capitalism and despotism. Good. Keep these guys in place. Do not leave yet. You are not allowed to leave. From here, we can strike every single one of these places, actually. And these guys are cut off from supplies, too, so that's good. Even though we're running out of stuff as well. Help out. You've got to kill them off. Come on. You're not allowed to lose. Force the attack if you have to. I don't care. If you die, you die. There you go. Take out Vyatka. It's not good. Nice. They're throwing more divisions in because they keep being defeated, which is good. Win or, win or die, boys. That's all you got. Win or die. Now, as long as we keep attacking and they can't move, we'll have Vyatka and all these soldiers dead. No, I said don't move. Boy, I said don't move. Oh, can we record this? I'd love to do more stuff here. Uh, Comey, probably Comey's probably going to actually be more important than Gainey. There you go. Nice, there we go. We've killed off 19,000 of our own population. We've killed off 36,000 of them. This is going to look very good now. Alright, head on in. Do whatever you have to do to win the war against the evil Tsarists. You hold for now. Let everyone do what they have to do. You guys go up there, go there. You guys sit down there. It'll be alright. There they go. They have... Izhevsk mechanical plant captured. After conquering the city of Izhevsk, we have secured a control over the Izhevsk mechanical plant, the single greatest center of arms production in West Russia. Izhevsk has long been used to pump out enormous quantities of pistols, rifles, and other small arms after the collapse of the West, Ref West Russian Revolutionary Front. Izhevsk and its factory became the property of Vladimir Romanov, the purported successor to the Russia's 
late Tsar, who used it to build up his reactionary forces in a play for the regional dominance. Now the plan is solidly ours. We can use it to the same purpose. In the Great Patriotic War in the West Russian World was one of the primary producers of weapons for a huge number of soldiers. We can ensure that our armies are armed with new modern firearms while opponents struggle to assemble outdated arsenals. Great, great, great. And I want to do one more focus before we're done here today. Ten minute trial. Take the worthy. There are two reasons why the front had chosen Sikhtiv Guard's capital first. It was un untouched by the Great Patriotic War and retained most of its industries in an area where most were supportive. The second one, and of greater importance to Tukhachevsky, was a position as a stockpile for the former Union's old chemical weapons. During the days of the Republic of Komi, these warehouses served as a deterrent, sheltering the city from bandit attacks. To make use of it as a means of defense, Tukhachevsky will have to dispatch his chemical engineers to the storehouses, examining every payload with care to ensure safety from sabotage. Next, to secure for usage and deployment, in case of attacks from the front. And the Germans ever come knocking again, they'll find the Russians ready with a nasty surprise. But that's going to end today's episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we will reunite all of Western Russia and form a greater Soviet Union. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.